Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC channel. In this series of videos, I'm going to be upgrading my SCX6 with a lot of parts. Um, a lot of them are switching aluminum or plastic for aluminum and a lot of brass uh, items that are going to add um, a lot of weight down low, uh, dramatically lowering the center of gravity and making it much more stable. Um, for example, uh, these items right here are shock spring caps. They go at the base of the shock absorber and they are just a big chunk of machine brass. They weigh a ton. Um, I could go through this piece by piece giving you how much each one weighs. It's kind of a waste of time doing all that. It's not necessarily going to hold much value for you. Um, I think what's more important is the end result. Um, a lot of these parts I found off Amazon which just seems to have a ton of RC parts these days. A lot of uh, third-party sellers. This is what seemed to take the longest to get here was the uh, the brass differential covers. But uh, they finally got here, and that is a hefty chunk of metal. That's going to replace the red plastic and add a lot of weight pretty much at the lowest point of the center of gravity other than the wheels and tires. Now, I'm going to also at this time be rebuilding both dips, diffs and the transmission. Um, from what I've heard, the grease in the transmission leaves a lot to be desired. And I'm going to be replacing that with uh, uh, Utter Butter uh, by... Cal RC. It's supposed to be an excellent lube. Um, so this will be going in the gearbox and in the differentials. Um, while I'm into the gearbox, I'm going to be doing some mods there as well. Um, I've got a uh, got a uh, differential or a, a slipper kit um, that is going to replace the stock clutch pads with uh, carbon fiber clutch pads. Uh, they're a lot more resilient than the stock pads to say the least. There we go. These guys right here by uh, BauhausRC.com. Um, you can probably get them direct through there or find them on uh, various hobby sites. So right off the bat, I'm just going to kind of cut open a lot of these bags and get various parts loose. Uh, this is a um, front bumper or a bumper mount. Excuse me. It replaces the uh, mount for the front bumper and for uh, several other items. It also um, is going to uh, help us with our steering. Um, steering is a big thing that I'm trying to improve. There's a lot of flex in the stock steering. And that is uh, all going to be addressed. For example, um, these are our rear shock mounts. Our front shock mount on the left-hand side has this tongue coming down here. And on the stock car, that's just plastic, and it has a lot of flex to it, and that can adversely affect steering. Um, well, as you can see, this is a big chunk of aluminum. And uh, there's a few other things in the steering that are also going to be uh, stiffening things up like that. this is our rear bumper replacement so we've got a handful of items here now this is slightly different than this one it's it's got these posts here which are probably for the Jeep um, those are just probably going to be undercover they pr probably won't be at, at issue uh, but we'll see if this is specific to the Jeep I may have to 
uh, put this in for return and get a replacement, but one thing at a time. Um, I'm also replacing the, uh, the lower links with these. Uh, they have an angle to them, which is going to increase the amount of uh, height in between the axles across the center. Uh, it's not a huge change, but you know, as you can see, if this, if your differential is here and you come off the tire, your, this angle is going to be higher than it would be stock if this was just a, a straight line. There we go. So that's our straight line and this is our bend. So all of this clearance here is going to, you know, that gives us that much more room to the ground or a log or any other item that we have to straddle with the vehicle. So these aren't very expensive and it's a, a decent upgrade. Now I discussed a lot of these items in the last video, so I'm going to go ahead and get busy on some stuff. Right off the bat, we got a lot of disassembly to do. See, I also kind of need to decide how I'm going to go about this. I may just strip the vehicle at large and uh, build it back up with all the pieces because there's so much being put in here and there's so much that needs to be taken apart. Um, yeah. I'm going to be wishing for a much larger work area here. <laughs> I think another thing I should do here to help keep things organized is get a bunch of Ziploc bags and like put the shocks and their four screws in a bag, uh, put this stuff in a bag, things like that. That way the screws all stay together and uh, things go together a little easier down the road. Okay, I'm going to try to show you things kind of a piece at a time. Uh, for example, I've already done uh, three of the four shocks. And uh, I'm bagging up all the excess parts. So to do these, it's fairly simple. You just take out the, uh, the spring collar or cup. And eventually what I'll be doing is taking all of the spares like this and putting them in a parts box. So I'll have them for later should I need them. Uh, for right now, I'm gonna be putting all of the shock absorbers and their screws into this Ziploc and that way it'll all be together when I'm ready to reassemble. So just compress the spring and this is where having a really good uh, shock pliers comes in handy. Now, if this is a little stiff to get off at first, just slide a wrench into the eyelet to get it started, and then you can go by hand from there. Now, the only downside to these brass weights is that they don't have a uh, slot cut in them. You have to take off 
the eyelet. Um, that means changing springs is harder, but you're not going to be changing them very often. Once you get a, uh, a spring setup that you like, if you even change from stock, um, you're probably going to make one or two changes and then you're going to be there and you'll never change them again. This is not a race truck. And these are really very nice shocks. Um, you know, hard aluminum bodies, aluminum caps. Well, uh, that may be aluminum or it may be plastic. I'm pretty sure it's aluminum. It's hard to tell from looking through the spring. Uh, we got plastic caps with screws. So we've got, in other words, we got an emulsion build. Um, we've got great damping. Uh, very nice. Very well-built shocks for something that really doesn't require it. just fits but that's everything I need for the shocks those are done so when everything else is prepared I pull these out I've got all the screws that I need and then I can throw the plastic caps in a box now as long as I'm here at the back end I think what I'll do is do the two uh, rear aluminum pieces get those swapped out and ready Um, the uh, shock uh, mounting holes are a little to the rear um, or forward, depending on how you want to look at it. So this piece will go for the other side. Now, I want to be very careful about not stripping anything. So when I'm on the reassembly part, I'm not going to screw them in all the way. I'm not going to trust the clutch. I'll get them mostly in and then I'll do the rest by hand. Now the front shock mounts, um, as you'll see, I've already gotten both axles off and uh, I put on the black arms. Um, these items, uh, that side's a little different. This side, you basically need four bolts, two from up here um, and then two down on the frame. Now you don't need to totally disassemble all of this. Uh, that would be a lot of extra screws to take off this one plastic piece because it uh, actually does have just one piece down here. It is bolted on. Hang on. Looked like it was one long piece of plastic. Which wouldn't have been unreasonable. Just more of a pain.
Now, even the ones with the frame, there's usually a piece of plastic behind there. So you're, you're going metal screws into plastic. So be careful not to strip them. At the same time, you don't need to worry about any Loctite, which is always nice. Now the fender goes underneath there, so I'm going to just hand tighten this for a second. Now this one I will want to put Loctite on eventually. Likewise, I'll need Loctite on this one. Again, just not sure how long I'm going to need this fender off, so I'm just putting these screws in place. Never worked on one of these before, so this is a learning experience at the same time for me as it is for you. But it is fairly simple. And if you've worked on an, the SCX-10, you should be fine. If you've worked on any crawler, they're all very similar, especially if it's one of the axials. Now, this is our pan hard linkage. And not, uh, I don't think it's really worth putting it on right now because all it's going to do is flap around on me. So I think I'm just going to leave it off for the moment. You know, actually, that might be easier to just leave off for the moment and uh, work on the servo because it is in the way. I mean, I could, might be able to do it without it, but I think it'll still be easier. Get it out of the way. I was just debating Loctite on here because I've got a lock, lock, a lock nut to put on from behind, but I think I will put on a little bit on the inner portion of this screw. Just enough. never hurts to be sure when it comes to suspension parts.
Well, that's a nice big servo that I can save for something else, not as radical. Um, because these servos do have a horrible reputation for, uh, for breaking, and sometimes within the first few minutes of driving them. So uh, that's why I decided to swap that out immediately. And I'm putting in the NSDRC RS2500 V2. This is a monster. is a mount for it let me just uh, show you some specs here not sure if you're able to see this or if this is getting lighted out here and here's a little picture of the inner gearing so, as long as I'm, well, now let's focus. So as you see, we have two wires coming out here. This is to our receiver. It is our signal and our, uh, our negative lead. And our power comes from here. We have a, a hot and cold, positive, negative line there. And to connect that, I've got this. And this is also made by NSDRC. And this is going to plug in between one of our batteries and it's a smart plug and it's going to provide our power from one of our batteries. So this can be running at its max or near max voltage. They even give you an extra lead in case you uh, want to solder this in somewhere in line. Uh, I decided to just buy the connector and not have to worry about uh, soldering that up. This may not function with this. I thought that was designed for this servo, but perhaps not. Okay, I'm gonna pause up here and look for some parts. Okay, the aluminum frame doesn't work. It's uh, It's gotta be designed for a specific type of servo where you actually screw it into the frame of the servo itself. Um, for example, you would take out these four bolts and you would bolt it, that aluminum frame, to the top of the servo and then bolt that frame uh, onto the truck chassis here. And that just doesn't seem like it's going to work. Um, the, uh, the other option is to use <clears throat> excuse me, a piece that comes uh, with the truck. It is in a plastic bag with the free uh, batteries that they give you, um, the double A's for your transmitter. And it is similar to this piece here, um, 
but uh, it's shorter, so it, it plugs in just like that. Now they give you these two pieces here. These are different spline count plugs that would go inside here uh, for a different type of servo, but this servo uses a much coarser spline uh, for the torque. Uh, so that's not going to uh, help us to have those two pieces. Um, the other thing, unfortunately, is that this is slightly shorter. Now, hopefully, programmatically, we can get the same throw out of it, um, but we are not going to be able to use this longer arm. Uh, so then there's going to be mounting this. There's going to be a few compromises. Um, we're going to need some spacers under here, or we would need to trim part of this arm over this part right here. And there's not much plastic here. That would take a good bit of strength out of this piece here. So I don't think I want to do that. And I don't know of an aluminum replacement for this. It's a very complex piece. So for the time being, I think I'm going to have to go with spacers. Now the next question is, am I going to have enough room <clears throat> for the arm to traverse down here? And I think I'll be in the ballpark. No, because this isn't very tall, this arm. So I think I would need to actually cut that piece of plastic. So I'm going to pause up and work on that. I'm going to take as little material as I can. So I was able to take off a fairly minimal amount and uh, get the server to fit. I think I'm going to have the clearance that I need now. So it's above the frame rail and it's above this piece here.
flimsy. Now the, uh, the screws I drove through there uh, go all the way through the plastic part and that's what I was hoping for and now I'm going to take some lock nuts and I'm going to drive those down on top of those screws pinning that plastic so these things can't tear free without you know the whole plastic part you know, coming apart. I think this one's going to be able to go on. Okay, that's going to clear too. So one, two, three, four uh, lock nuts on top of the screws that go uh, through the servo and through the plastic. So that should be pretty solid. Now I can't test this to see what position it's in yet. So I'm going to worry about that later um, it's about time to take a break and get some dinner and come back at this in a little while but a lot of progress has been made so that's good <laughs> <laughs> 